Hi there folks, now today I want to talk to you about a common form of technical analysis that many traders have adopted over the years, and that's the moving average crossover. It's basically when two moving averages, whether you're using an exponential moving average or a simple moving average, when one of those uh, moving averages crosses above or below um, another moving average, normally a fast moving average and a slow moving average um, and so forth. Now, I'm not going to go too much detail about that. You can go and check that out in, in other videos. But the moving average crossover is a common form of analysis, as I see. I see many um, market educators and gurus out there all peddling their strategies. I've looked at a lot of these strategies and a lot of them are using a form of this moving average crossover. And I think many of them are using it in the wrong way. Now, there is certainly some very powerful uh, ways that you can move, use the moving average crossover as well. Indeed, we talk about these inside our trading room. My colleague, in fact, is uh, trading a very successful strategy doing exactly that. But most out there are doing it wrong. And also, I want to mention this. There's a lot of people here that are watching me here on YouTube. A lot of people like yourself that maybe you're exploring now YouTube and you're out there looking for that magic strategy, that holy grail strategy. For those of you that have been following me over the years, you would have heard me say countless times that the magic, the holy grail strategy does not exist. If there were such a strategy, there would be no national debt of, well, some of the countries that have huge national debts. I want to get myself into any more trouble. I've done that in the past. But there is no magic holy grail strategy. But you need a strategy. Most of successful traders have got control of their mind, not necessarily the best strategy in the world. But the moving average crossover strategy, or a form of that, I think also gives aspiring traders the false sense of security. They look back at a chart and they see the fast moving average crossing up through the slow moving average, and they think, gosh, if I was in that trade at that crossover, I'd have made all that move. And then they see the crossover at the end and they think if I'd have sold at that crossover as the fast moves through the slow, that would have made me a gazillion bucks. But in reality, when you're trading the live markets with your own money, the truth is very far from what you've seen in the past. Because you need to see exactly what's going on with price in conjunction with the moving averages and the moving average crossover. Remember, the very nature of the moving average means it lags behind price. Price moves before the moving average crossover moves. Now we'll jump onto the charts and I'll show you the potential pitfalls of using the moving average crossover. But also I'm gonna show you an idea that you may want to explore further in developing your own strategy because there are some very powerful ways uh, that you can use the moving average crossover if you know uh, the nature of how they behave. So that's exactly what we'll do now. Then you can go away and put these into your own strategy development. I often say that the best way to attack the markets is using something that you've developed yourself rather than just going bought off the shelf or copying someone else. Once you know exactly how it works, how it's fully put together, then you're in a better situation from the get-go, I would say. Okay, let's have a quick look now and I'll show you what all this fuss is about. Come on. Okay, so first off, let's define exactly what I mean by a moving average crossover. Now, I assume at this juncture, you know what a moving average is. If you don't, maybe you should pause the video, go back and check some of my other education out there about moving averages. Now, on this chart, I've got two moving averages. I've got the fast moving average, which in this example is going to be the 20 period moving average. That's the purple line. And I've got the slow moving average. That's the yellow line and that's the 50 period moving average. And what I'm looking for here is for when the fast moves up through or down through the slow. The purple moving up through the yellow or down through the yellow, depending, of course, on where it is at the current time. The moment you'll see the purple line is below, we're in a downtrend. The fast moving average is below the slow moving average. Now look at the purple line and see how it moves in relationship to the price as I scroll on through the chart. OK, so we're in a downtrend here and now the markets begin to pull back. Not much movement in the purple line, the fast moving average, because it's a 20 period average. It takes time for it to start moving back up. And finally, it does now touches 
the slow moving average and finally crosses over the slow moving average and now that is a moving average crossover to the upside okay price is hitting uh, highs up there and then thinks about it starts to pull back and then the moving average slowly follows behind remember it's a lagging indicator it's slowly following behind price is now breaking through and the moving average is now crossing down through the slow moving average some strategies now will be trading this they'll be trading the crossover as we now break into downtrend uh, almost went through uh, to the top so that's basically what a moving average crossover is now i'm going to show you some examples of why I think many strategies that use this uh, form or that use this approach are flawed and they're leaving uh, money on the table. Okay, so let's assume I am going to trade this crossover. So waiting for the fast to move down through the slope. Okay, the touching there and we finally cross through. So my short trade will be once it's closed, once the crossover has been confirmed, my short trade would be there. I'm going to place in a sell stop there. Okay, and off we go. Markets move into profit, and then back up to break even, then offside again. A bit of pain there. Where do I exit? The moving averages are still below, so I should, should in theory, still be short. Markets didn't cross up through, so I'm still in this trade, depending on your stops. But you'd need a quite a decent sized stop. It's already been 50 pips against us. And now we finally move into profit. Phew, we can take a sigh of relief. The movie average crossover theory does work. Or does it? Okay, so we're in nice uh, trend here. Nice profit. And scrolling on through. Now a bit of a pullback. And we'll see. Finally, price is now moving back up touching and we cross through on that candle there so it exit our trade about there which is just about 14 pips profit 14 pips we've had that 50 pip stop to keep us in the trade we've been in a nice trend we've got out for pretty much break even but it looks good when you look back at the chart, thinking if you'd have sold at the crossover. But it doesn't always play out that way when you have live trades. Remember, you've got to have a stop in place, a buffer, just in case it goes against you. And here's another example. We're in consolidation. The predominant trend is down. So we're looking for sell trades potentially, waiting for the crossover. Looking at that purple line crossing through the yellow line or waiting for it at least. Okay, finally, it breaks through to the downside. So we take a sell trade there. Uh, so we've got a sell limit there or sell stop order. Uh, we're in a short trade. And off it goes. Wow, this is great. This moving average crossover. Perfect timing as we break into profit. Then, of course, the market pulls back on itself. And the fast is now moving back up to the slow again almost closing in on it we're still in the trade and then finally we see a break higher and the moving average crossover finally happens there we're taking about 35 pips profit well that means you needed a 35 pip stop at least if you're trading one to one but look at that big move that we've missed the actual move from here to here is 180 pips and all we've done is manage to take 35 pips out of it. So basically the entry and exit using this moving average crossover, I think is flawed. But if you look back at the chart and you think every time it crossed over, had I been in that trade, it would have been a winner. Well, in reality, when you play it with real price action and the moving averages, it is a different story. One last example. Okay, so here we are in a long trend. I'm waiting for long trades only. So I'm waiting for a cross of the moving averages to the upside. Uh, price is now moving back up through with this bullish candle. Remember the 20 is lagging behind. And we are now seeing 
the fast move up through the slope. So this could be a buy trade on the moving average crossover theory. So a buy order here. So we'll place a buy there and see where we go. Of course, you've got to have your stops in place as well. Uh, a bit painful there. And we are still in an uptrend. Moving averages are still above. We should still be in this trend. Now moving into profit. Oh, this is great. This moving average crossover strategy. Perfect timing. And then my price moves back down. And then slowly we cross back on through. We close the trade there for a loss. Actually had quite a nice move of the trend. Moved almost 90 pips. And we ended up losing when we we're following the trend by following the moving average crossover. But all is not lost. I think there are certain ways that you can trade the moving average crossover uh, to keep you in trades for longer. Um, use them for entries as well. Not too sure about exits, uh, but certainly for entries. But I always like for the overreaction, the candles that cause that crossover to finally cross over for them to retrace before I enter the direction of the trend in uh, in uh, determined by the crossover. Let's have a look here. Uh, for an example, at the moment we're in a bit of a downtrend. We've gone into an uptrend here at the base hit, looking for a move. So we've had this big, big green candle. Moving averages has not quite crossed through. And there we are, we're now seeing a crossover just about with that move there. So a big, big volatility move. I want to see a pullback before I enter that trade. Okay, we're now pulling back, pulling back to those moving averages. Entering there, and off we go for trend continuation. So I don't want to be buying the top of that momentum move. I want to wait for the pullback. Of course, I cherry pick these, but if you go through these on the back testing charts yourself, you'll see how uh, how many times this happens is really quite uh, quite remarkable. I'm waiting uh, for the reaction of those moving average crossover traders to exit the market for their loss, and then get in with the direction of the uh, of the predominant trend the trend that got those crosses uh, in the first place to happen and here's another example price is now finding support moving back up fast moving average is closing in on the slow moving average and we have a crossover about there finally crossing over so this is where all your long uh, traders uh, are getting in on the crossover, on the moving average crossover. I'm going to wait for a pullback. Invariably, after you see this crossover, you're going to see a consolidation. So what you may want to do, and I want you to go and play with this rather than just take my word for it, is maybe wait for a pullback to a factor of an ATR, for example. I've got the ATR at the bottom of the screen here. There it is there. The ATR average true range. You remember, the moving average crossover is lagging. Let's get some of that lag back by waiting for a pullback. More often than not, it pulls back there yourself. There again, you've really saved yourself, say, 20 pips on that entry as well. Uh, that's like an ATR pullback before the trend continues. More often than not, when the crossover happens, there is an initial pullback. Uh, maybe you should be waiting for that pullback to the tune of an ATR before uh, you enter the trade. Remember, if you get a better entry, that means you can better manage your exits as well. And managing exits with an ATR, I think, is the way to do it, as opposed to waiting for a moving average crossover. But what you may want to do is if you're using here, like the one hour chart, you might want to uh, drill down to exits, uh, your, uh, your, your trades uh, using the crossover, but on a lower time frame chart. So you might want to move back down to the 15 to exit on the crossover. But for me, I think it's worth uh, certainly exploring the static uh, set in stone um, profit targets uh, using a factor perhaps of an ATR. You may want to trail, uh, for example, the uh, third or fourth exit on a trade, but using uh, price action I think is better than using um, a delayed and um, a lagging uh, moving average crossover. Okay, so I hope you found uh, that useful. I've given you something there that maybe you can now go away with, explore in your own time, get out some back testing software 
and play with this see for yourself the pitfalls and see maybe some uh, ways that you can use the moving average crossover to your advantage it can be very powerful if you know how to use it correctly but also very very detrimental if you're not aware of how it actually behaves if you like the video of course give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs down if you didn't let me know in the comment section below if you've got a moving average crossover that you think i should know about be always uh, happy to see and explore don't forget to follow us on all the socials of course now if you want to take part in our regular daily live streams you can do so by coming over to the forexsignals.com website you can take out a free trial you can interact with us we are streaming live up to six times a day uh, five days a week um, let me know if you do come over and i'll roll out the red carpet for you uh, to say hi and so forth of course if that is not your thing that is not a problem i will see you next week and have a good week